All right, everyone, welcome back. And uh, there's a bit of a spot the difference going on today. I'm not sure if you can tell, but uh, I think Paulie is in another universe. Where, where, Paulie, can you hear me? Where are you coming from, mate? Hello, hello, hello. Yes, yes, uh, Paulie. <laughs> I am. I have a green screen behind me. Yeah, that's right. Yes, our budget has really, really blown out. Of yeah, the water. We were like, you know what? We could invest in microphones. We yeah. could invest in um, literature and education for ourselves. But no, we invested in stupid shit. Well, well we, we've actually invested in one green screen because our budget just didn't cut for get to get to get two. So I'm I'm still where I am, but we got one green screen for Paul. You drew you drew the short straw, Tommy. <laughs> That's right. No, That's no, right. Our, our our budget is so massive. I bought a brand new house. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm not even Tom. We bought a new person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm I am in a different setting. This is my home, my family home. Welcome. And, um, you know, I will do the occasional podcast here. For those of you who are listening to this podcast, you don't know what we're talking about. No, and nothing really matters. <laughs> yep. Continue as you were. Continue. Yes. Well, guys, today we uh, we have a bit of an obscure um, episode for you, but um, hopefully a no less valuable show. Um, I think for the first couple of episodes, we've really tried to you know, just hit some really tangible ideas that we can get across for you, whether it's, you know, optimizing sleep, optimizing exercise, optimizing being a role model, you know, um, I think it's about six or seven, maybe even eight shows now. But today mm -hmm. we're going to hit um, something a little bit less tangible, but I think it's an important concept because, uh, you know, I mean, even before the show, Paulie and I were really kind of discussing some of the elements that we want to touch on today. And, um, it's uh it's a it's a wide topic but today's show is all about growing old gracefully uh in the modern age and um you know i think straight off the bat there's a real kind of phobia of aging that um not only men have to work through um women especially have to work through but society in general has to kind of come to terms with and it's it's an interesting one isn't it mate because aging is inevitable and yet we're so afraid of it as a society 100 percent uh, you know, it was only today that I was having a conversation with uh, a, somebody about um, Botox and uh, how it's just become the the new normal, whether yeah, it's yeah. Botox, fillers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, it really doesn't matter how far down the line you, you go with it. And I'm not here to actually um, have an argument for or against it. It's just about providing our um, philosophical kind of tangent on the way we see aging and the way we see the world. And then also in the same breath, uh, understanding how you can actually feel as young as you possibly can as well, because, yep. you know, I feel like a lot of people are going down the path of cosmetic surgery at the same time as doing so many things that are going directly against the superficial outcomes of what they're trying to achieve. Mm but from, from the inside. So they may have, and let's face it, once, you know, if you've got fillers in and, and cosmetic surgery all over yourself, you don't necessarily look like you did 20 years ago, but you may, but you're doing things to yourself that will, you know, pro progressively aid you onwards and onwards. So mm -hmm. um, it, it's an interesting topic to talk about. Um, but I think the the responsibility of transitioning into fatherhood as well is also another one that we can kind of talk about that kind of coincides with all of these kinds of aging gracefully and ways that you can go about, um, you know, having a really beneficial uh, experience whilst doing this. Yeah, for sure, mate. Well, so, you know, speaking, speaking to a father, obviously being yourself, did you notice, so if you, if you think about, back on your life, you kind of notice um, um, challenging rites of pas passage, you know, um, either voluntarily embraced or involuntarily thrust upon that mm -hmm. changed your identity and made you become a different person, you know, mm -hmm. becoming old isn't necessarily psychologically, just this lovely kind of fluid thing. It's not like a, a wave in an ocean that moves towards, you know, wherever it goes. Um, did you feel, was it like an overnight thing for you that you started to feel like a father and therefore um, take on that new new paradigm of, of aging in that respect in a positive sense? Or what, what was it like for you? Um, so I think for, for me, it happened in, a, in stages and fatherhood was just one of those stages of my own 
personal development and evolution uh, as a human. And I've t- I may have talked about this in the past, but for me, it was like I was single for a very long time. Uh, I was the center of my own universe for a very <laughs> long time. And when I woke up, I could do whatever I wanted and at whatever time I wanted. Mm. Uh, transitioning into, um, you know, being in a relationship and uh, stepping into uh, th- th- that sphere, you're, you're sharing your existence with somebody um, whilst at the same time having time for yourself to be yourself and feel whole within yourself. And then once you step into fatherhood, um, you, you, you're further uh I suppose you're you're now uh, needing to navigate yourself, being able to honour yourself as an individual, being able to honour yourself and your partner as a separate entity, uh, and then stepping into this family unit, being able to honour your your relationship with one child and then your relationship with another child. And all these dynamics are really, really delicate. And if you're not kind of conscious of them, and if you're not uh, aware of them, uh, they can they can, you can be very reactive towards them, and I and I am still reactive towards them, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but on those times that I'm really conscious of the way uh, how lucky I am to be a father, and how lucky I am to have independent relationships with both my children and my partner, mm-hmm. um, that gives me a little bit of intent behind how I can relate to everybody and myself. And that gives me, um, I, I feel lucky to be able to have that forethought and, the, and, and that sense. So to answer your question, stepping into that next realm, uh, it, it depends how much intent I have given to that transition that gives me the ability to be able to um, execute my role as a father um and that and that part of my life with a little bit more grace Mm, mate you've touched on something very uh uh very kind of intrinsic to uh growth in psychology you know and it's you know like i mentioned before willingly embracing something that's going to have a, a a very very big um effect on you you know it's going to change you you know proportionally as opposed to having it thrust upon you, <clears throat> you know, I'm, 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 I wrote about this a couple of years ago, you know, this notion that um, divorcing someone, you know, it's like, uh, we're just not ready. We're just not right for each other anymore. And you recognize that that's going to be painful because there's going to be grief. And then your identity is going to be extracted out of that. And you've got to find yourself again, but you decided to do that. So you're kind of willingly accepting all of life's uncertainties as they, as they, fall in front of you as opposed to coming home and finding your partner in a bed with someone else. And then mm-hmm. all of a sudden your map of reality changes and you don't know who you are and you can't trust anyone else anymore because you got that wrong. What else have you got wrong? And it has a, a really damaging post-traumatic effect because you didn't ask for it, but now you have to kind of work through it. And there's that added element of resistance prior to accepting the growth that comes from an experience that you didn't ask for. And I mm-hmm. think that can be a difference. And it sounds to me like um, it, it's along the same vein of what you're talking about. Just this, this idea of intent, you know, mm. I've, 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 I've stepped into being a father. Um, I was with myself for, you know, by myself for a very long time, but now being a father and having that intention to be a father, I accept mm. all of the difficulties and the triumphs that come with it. Definitely. And I, I think if you don't have that kind of pause and reflection, within that transition. It doesn't need to be even fatherhood. Uh, we're talking about fatherhood in this instance. Um, mm. But, you know, if we talk about you and your your partner as well, stepping into that, that, that relationship that you guys have chosen to give your independent selves to collectively now, mm. um, there's there's a shift. There's a, 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 a real intent behind it. Um, and once you uh, go through that exercise, I feel like, you're not just more aware of of what you're doing, but you have the opportunity then to navigate your way through it when challenges come up with a uh, almost like a, a a map that is already um, that, that you've already gone through in the past to to a certain extent in your mind. Yes, absolutely. It's uh, it's um, 
we could we could segue very easily into relationships here, but I think uh, we'll leave that for another episode. Yeah, go but, for it. Yeah, but um, so so I think one of the things we'll get back to this idea about aging. <clears throat> I think that the big thing about it is that it's always difficult to to do something when there's this preconceived societal expectation or notion or just an implicit agenda you know i think if you asked anyone on the street hey you know what do you think of aging and stuff it's like oh it's wonderful we get lines and maybe people say no against that but no one will say oh it shouldn't happen because it's like it happens <laughs> that's mm-hmm. like the sky shouldn't be blue you know um hopefully we wouldn't get a few people saying that but um <laughs> everything you know sex cells biological signaling youth it's all it's a, that so much of our marketing is is entrenched in that biological signaling you know what's emotionally going to get you to buy my product well it's sex and our most primal needs foods consumption connection all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. um there's a real difficulty that comes with growing up and you know something my mum speaks to a lot as well as that kind of like middle age um even even after middle age, probably after middle age, but in between being, you know, old and, and, and kind of middle age young, it's kind of like almost like a lost generation, you know, mm. we don't know what to do with them as a, as yeah. a society. They're still working, but they've yeah. kind of, they've got kids that are grown up now. And it's like, that's a real shame because they've given so much, you know, and I feel like we, there should be more for that generation. Just kind of speaks to that difficulty that we have with aging. Absolutely. And you're right. They, 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 they do kind of linger in, in no man's land for, for a little bit. And, you know, we've talked about evolutionarily, mm. the, the, you know, thousand years ago or, uh, uh, you know, hunter gatherer times, let's call it, you know, that they, they would have been um, discarded really yeah, um, totally. because, it, because they're, they're, they're just using up resources and um, there was no need for them. So um, we've, we've evolved to a point where, you know, there is a, we're we're at this stage now where modern medicine is keeping people alive, but the uh, progress or the current status of modern medicine is not, it doesn't focus on the quality of life. Mm. <clears throat> and now we're kind of stepping into a little bit of a realm as to, you know, how do we keep ourselves uh, alive for longer, but also increase our, our our longevity in a sense in the quality of the time that we have left on this earth. Yes. So, uh, and, and I think we, we talk often from uh, top up, top down, bottom up model. And we can talk a lot about this from, from that kind of lens, you know, there are lots of things that you can do and the basics are in, in terms of aging gracefully being the title of this episode is, the, the, the simple basics like, you know, exercising regularly, which we know all the benefits. And if you don't, you know, um, you, you, you need to exercise, yes. you know, your body needs to be oxygenated. It needs to be put under a healthy amount of stress. It needs to be um, uh, go through that adaptation process and challenge. Um, similarly, your mind needs to be doing the yeah. same thing. Uh, we need to be, you know, uh, especially as we age, we need to be in, in, engaging in regular strength training because it challenges our muscles and our muscles, uh, we actually struggle to put on lean muscle significantly more um, uh, as we age, as we yes. get to that 40, 50 year, year old age, which means if we don't put on that muscle, then we're, we're just going to wither away. And we see that all the time uh, still with these aged people who are hunched over because they remained in this, in this state and they, they never challenged their bodies to the point to be able to create posture, to be able to create a, um, a and as I mentioned before, the, uh, the, their muscle status diminishes over and over and over again till, I mean, I hate to say it, but you, you, you I don't know if you've had the misfortune fortune uh, of spending lengthy periods of time in nursing homes but Mm -hmm. i have and Mm -hmm. it's a pretty um it's a pretty full-on existence in there and you just see these uh these walking corpses more often than not which is uh is pretty rough so i suppose the challenge is not just to age uh or to 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 live longer if that's what you guys if, if that's what we want but it's to increase the quality of our life as we age yeah, so 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 this is kind of we're now at the crux of what we wanted to talk about. I think here and and aging gracefully is uh, there's an interesting dichotomy that I think we have to manage here, in that how do we push ourselves to ensure that 
we are still being able to optimize our minds and our bodies whilst not pushing ourselves to the extent of being ridiculous. In other words, knowing where our limits are because our limits do uh, start to fall as we age. You know, I, 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 I can't recover as fast from my training um, as I could five years ago, you know, let alone 15 years, 20 yeah. years, you know, but I still have to ensure that I work hard to keep what I have so that I feel good. So this is this is kind of that dichotomy that we're, we want to start to talk about in terms of how do we manage that. Absolutely. Understanding what our boundaries are, but also being uh, conscious of not, 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 not creating artificial um, shallow boundaries yes. either. Yes. So to be able to push the envelope to a certain degree and to always just to let our biology know and our minds know and our emotions know that we are resilient human beings and yep. to create that res resilient um, outer layer of yes. who we are. And, 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 and that's just been this hormosis um, concept and this adaptation uh, uh, process that we undergo biologically, mentally. Um, it's proven now through science to be able to continue to do it, but it's like, we, as a modern world now, we, we're like, oh, okay. So if we put our body under stress, then we're going to get healthier. Cool. Let's just run into a truck. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, we, we tend to do things to to the extreme, which then circles me straight back to this obsession with looking younger. You know, um, I think what you'll find is if you're healthy and you do the things that increase your 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 um, health and vitality from the inside, your outside will reflect that. And it's very clear in through logic. We, this that I'm looking at right now with you is, uh, is skin. It is yeah. our biggest organ in our body. Mm. So if we are treating our organs with care, respect, and um, the ability to be able to give to them, then you, it will be reflected on your outside layers. Yes, 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 definitely. So, so from a practical sense, you know, as, 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 as we age, you know, you, you, we don't want you going from, if you're someone who, who trains all the time, you know, um, to just now going for walks every day, but it might just be, you know, if you're someone who used to train, um, five, six times a week, you might want to replace one of those sessions with a more passive exercise, you know, engaging in yoga or doing a sauna or just ensuring you get a bit more sleep, you know, just start to kind of balance uh, the, 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 you know, the two absolutes out there and, um, the same thing, you know, and, and I think what you find is, as you said, when you were talking about, um, doing justice for your emotions and, and your psychology as well, feeling into what your needs are mm. and then making a decision from there, that doesn't necessarily mean just, oh, well, I can't be bothered. So I'm going to be on, I'm just going to hang out in front of the TV all day, but being, not being bothered might mean not going as hard, you know, mm. so that you, so it's sustainable. So, you, <clears throat> so it's not just one session and then you're buggered for six weeks. So it becomes a lifestyle. A hundred percent. And you, you, you see that all the time. It's like, if you look in the animal kingdom, uh, you have these, you know, these zebras that are, you know, drinking at the, at the lakes and then a lion comes and they're like, oh shit, you know, they get straight into that uh, sympathetic nervous system and they'll be like charged and they'll be in survival mode. But as soon as the lion's yes. gone and it's taken one of their brothers or whatever. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, they just go, <laughs> rest in peace. Yes. Uh, it, it, it goes straight back to, uh, y y you know, drinking in the lake and stepping back into, um, you know, th th that cortisol spike starts to die down. Yeah. But as humans, what we're, we've kind of created here is this, um, this artificial spike in cortisol and adrenaline that continues to, 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 to be sustained yeah. uh, over and over and over again. And, and it tends to be kind of created through um, objects, uh, objects of our own mind mm -hmm. and our, our own societal pressures as well. So Definitely. I think it's, it, it's about sometimes using rituals that can nullify and bring that stress level down as well. Um, even things like, and this is such a massive one, uh, you know, uh, being a part of a community, being a part of a friendship circle, a tribe, people that you can actually 
engage with and be a part of that is that is bigger than just who you are that's yes. that, that that's a massive massive thing it's a, what innately makes us human so um these are all things that contribute not just to our mental health but but our physical health and um t- it tends to be whatever we like is good for our um physiology in a holistic sense will have some kind of positive effect on our, on our mentality and vice versa yeah yeah we're always in that, um, you know, the lion's always running after us in this day and age from a physiological perspective. Absolutely. You know, we, we don't, I mean, we, we check our phones, we check our emails from, from the moment we wake up, we wake up to the moment we fall asleep. Yeah. Um, as a result, we don't give our minds the time to calm down and process the stimuli that we have been um, exposed to throughout the day, which makes our sleep terrible. And, and everything that's going on is basically just saying to this 210 million year old technology, you're unsafe, you're unsafe, be prepared, be prepared, be prepared. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like we've run, we've been chased by a bear, run into a cave. There's only one way out, but the bear's there. So sure we're safe, but we're freaking out at the same time. Chronically, we're in a chronic state of stress because mm-hmm. we're stuck. That's mm-hmm. what's really scary about it. And I think, what we now have to do in this day and age is intentionally switch off. Yes. As you said, you know, engage in a community, you know, power in numbers. That's, that feels good from a primitive perspective, you know, switching Uh, off all of the bullshit, getting out in nature, eating healthily, ensuring you get a really good night's sleep so that you can, Hey, if if you're someone who wants to go hard in the, in, in your career or everything, um, switch it off from time to time. So you can. Absolutely. And it's, and it's like choosing the people that you want to be around as well, you know, choosing the environment that you want to be around. Don't just be around a community of people because you hung around them 20 years ago. You know, it it may actually be that you guys have, have naturally, um, you know, uh, moved in different directions. Uh, choose to be around people that you you know that inspire you. That uh, you you know that, that that there's a mutually beneficial um, soul relationship that you can you can spend time with. Because I guarantee you, that's going to give a, a, a tremendous amount of value to your to your human biology, not just your your soul and um, you know who you are as a human, but like your your actual cells will charge as a result. Man, that's a big one. That's a big one. I think that's another thing that we're as a society a little bit, you know, anti. It's that notion of you know we're all good at, uh, gr- you know, we all recognise the importance of grieving relationships that can no longer be. But what about grieving uh, communities and old friends and mm. you know you guys deviating um, just because you went to school together or whatever it was. Um, times change people change you know mm-hmm. and i d- this doesn't mean that we all have to remove ourselves from friendships group from friendship groups but if you guys are no longer the same people yeah. um and of course you're not going to be because time changes us all yep. if you guys have grown together then keep doing it but if you haven't then at the very least you can start having you know honest conversations and then if you need to just kind of extend the arm a little bit more then you know by all means absolutely and there are going to be moments and times where, you know, you practically need to be in people's worlds and that's, that's yes. totally fine as well. Um, you know, we, we've talked about this, uh, you know, off camera in the past. I think yeah. it's, uh, um, it's an interesting topic and it's something that we can, you know, kind of almost like devote an entire episode to because our social circles, I think, give us so much from a mental health perspective. Uh, it's something, you know, if we, if we remain isolated or at least feel isolated uh, from the world, that is going to do nothing but not not good things for mm-hmm. your health, you know, oh, both so. physically and, and mentally. But, um, you know, I'm a little bit older than you, Tommy boy. A uh, couple of months. A couple of months. Couple of months. <laughs> but uh, well, I think you, you look better than me, mate. <laughs> well, it's. Like I said, this is green green screen. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we put all our. I actually, uh, with that extra um, budget left over, I yeah. put, uh, I did a face off. <laughs> nice. No, I, see, I was I, wondering where that uh, Cage's face. Yeah, I can tell. Well, I mean, I was doing the Excel spreadsheet, and I was wondering where the uh, twenty three grand of the initial budget went. Mate, you, you snooze, no, no. you lose. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
One thing I have noticed with my physical training is I've noticed that variety has really helped me. I mean, the power and the art of a warm up. Wow, that didn't exist in my twenties. You know, um, being able to do that is is great. And I also noticed when, earlier on, I was quite extreme in my uh, pursuits of, of anything. So yes. I, I played a lot of music and went on tour a lot when I was in my 20s and I drank a lot when I was in my 20s and I, and I woke up and then I'd go hard, uh, go for a, like a hard run and I'd constantly be putting you know, what I thought was, was balance, but mm. it was actually just w- living in, in two extremes. Yes. You know, uh, party at night, wake up, swim, run, lift weights, do the whole bit. Um, but the, the power and just stopping and pausing uh, and not doing anything uh, with intent mm. is also a, a really wonderful thing to be able to uh, draw one's attention to also. I think that's a big thing. I think as uh, I'm certainly starting to notice that myself, um, you know, and it's, uh, I think when we are young, we do operate between two poles and absolutes, you know, it's oh, you know, I'm one of those people that if I have one drink, I'll have 20, you know, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh, I have an addictive personality and you know, whatever it is, I'll do everything right. And I'll sleep when I'm dead. Um, and it's yeah. just not sustainable. I think, you know, even beyond um, your age, it's hard for human beings to try to find that that middle point that center mm. point you know it's that's that's the hard thing i think um for all of humanity it's i'm going to have three beers tonight mm. you know or uh i'm just gonna do a bit of a warm-up and see how i feel for a couple of exercises mm-hmm. you know because momentum is this crazy thing you feel good but then you feel great and then you're gonna go you know or it's mm-hmm. just that's really hard but i think you know, people ask me all the time, you know, about purpose and all that kind of stuff. And I think in the beginning, it's more about just living intentionally and, you know, doing what you say you will do and finishing what you start. And I yeah. think if you, if you make a rule that you're going to finish what you start, what you'll find very quickly is uh, what you're actually capable of mm. and where those boundaries are and where you can push them. Mm. You know? And I found that in CrossFit, you know, all the time I would, set these workouts for myself and they would be insane. You know, my mind had these notions about how much I could train and they go, Oh, I actually can't do this. So I brought it back, found where my edge was and then started to build from there. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and the results that you're going to achieve as, as a result of not, not just the tangible results, but, but the, um, the understanding of who you are as a man, um, also, and, and people poo poo this a lot. They're like, Oh, you know, you use CrossFit or um, physical uh, sure. training as a uh, as an example. I f- I personally find that physical training is an incredible metaphor and a vehicle to be able to express yourself and also to delve into yourself yes. and understand who you are as a person. Yes, you get challenged all the time. You're part of uh, more often. You're part of a team. You yep. need to learn how to communicate. You need to learn how to um, often discard your ego as well. Uh, and if you can learn how to take your learnings from the physical realm and, and actually bring them into who you are as a man, as a human, then, uh, uh, you know, physical training becomes a tremendous teacher. Yeah. It, it absolutely is a vehicle to help you discover yourself, you know, Discovering yourself is finding out what you're capable of, what, you, what you're not capable of, what you like, what you don't like, being courageous enough to express those things um, and then figuring out who you get along with, you know, and obviously mm. life is a giant ceremony for growth. Um, but uh, within that, exercise is a fantastic thing as well. But I think yeah. anything that requires consistency um, is going to help you do that. And obviously, you and I talk all about exercise and health and well-being a lot because A, that's how we met and became mm-hmm. mates. But B, it's um, um, it's an integral part of our lives. Um, but it's 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 all sorts of things, you know. Um, but I think being intentional with whatever it is that you do and using that as a way to discover deeper truths is is the way. 
Absolutely. And, you know, drawing that background into uh, this longevity talk that we are loosely talking about yes. uh, <laughs> is, you know, this consistency model, you know, yep. being able to not just do something like I, I know, I think we all have people in our lives that yo-yo diet and yes. you know, you'll see them and you'll be like, hey, mate, um, uh, you know, I lost 20 kilos. Yeah. And, uh, and and then you know six months later they've they've put it all back on and then another five kilos and then it kind of happens yo yo's up and down um, to be able to you you know uh, approach life in whatever pursuit you want to be able to achieve whether it's you know if if you've got if you feel like you have five kilograms of body fat to lose mm -hmm. um, to be able to do that in a consistent manner but in an achievably sustainable manner yep. uh, it, it shows. Uh, a, it shows uh, conviction and consistency, but, but B, it shows self-control to not have to um, go to the extreme knowing that you've done it before numerous times and then rebounded back. And the science backs that up as well, you know, like that's just one example. Let's look at um, an, another example, working on relationships, you right, know, right. Uh, working on a relationship with your, with your significant other. I mean, I, I, my personal perspective of this is it requires conscious attention yes. and you're not just going like, you're not going to just kind of continuously feel like, oh, I wake up every day and I'm just, I, I just fall, I fall in love with my, my totally. wife all, all over again. Um, it, it, it's something that in my mind requires attention. And if your expectation is that you're just going to fall in love with your, your, your partner over and over again, I mean, I think you might be disappointed yeah. <laughs> without, without any consistent work. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I totally agree. It is, it is conscious attention. You know, the word love um, changes, you know, love in the first six months is a drug. It's yeah. just completely, it's just this giant neurochemical cocktail of dopamine and serotonin. You guys just can't stop having Constant. sex. And it's, it's just Constant. like, it's just MDMA times 10 for like six months. A hundred percent. Like <laughs> fireworks going off yeah. all over the place. Oh my God, she completes me. Like it's, you know, it's just fucking crazy. But then love. But internally, I just want to touch on what you were saying there. It's like a dopamine cocktail. You right. are actually, it's like you're just taking ice for six yes. months. Yes. Continue. Bearing in mind, uh, Paulie and I don't actually know what ice uh, is like, <laughs> at least well, not whilst we're recording. <laughs> definitely don't do ice and record at the definitely same time. Definitely don't do ice and record. Exactly. Exactly. From, from memory, from our sleep episode, it has a half life of 10 hours. Yeah, that's right. That's don't right, do it yeah. 10 hours before we'll be done. Sleep. That's right. <laughs> but, but, but even after that, when, when that starts to fade, love becomes a, a verb, you know, it's showing up, it's the doing, it's um, thinking of the other. And, and relationships tend to become, uh, if they're good conscious relationships, they become meaningful endeavors where you give to each other, you know, hopefully you don't lose yourself in that as well. Um, but uh, it is a verb fundamentally. And then with that attention, that conscious attention, you're always trying to balance. I, I, I love um, working with couples and um, Esther Perel is someone who I love reading. And um, she talks about, oh, she's amazing, yeah. You want, you want to balance um, freedom and intimacy. You know, you're always on that uh, spectrum where you're moving between being too close and then being far too far away. And when you're first coming together, there's a whole lot of separation because you guys don't really know each other and what you kind of like. And that increases attraction and dopamine. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. motivational. It's, oh, I'm going to get the reward. Yeah. And then what you also want, there's a fear there because you don't trust them yet, you know? Yep. And then yeah. after a long time, what tends to happen, I see this in, in the clinic all the time, oh, we haven't had sex in a very long time. And I just feel like she's my, she's my sister or he's my brother or whatever mm -hmm. it is. And that's when consciously adding some separation in there and pursuing your own goals. And maybe you wanna you know, spend a bit more time by yourself and find out who you are again, just adds that attraction back into it. Mm -hmm. But it's a, it's a game that you guys mm -hmm. can consistently play for the rest of your mm -hmm. life. Yep, spot on. And to draw, uh, to use that example of the separation and feeling like there's, a, you know, th th that to me is also, it's like this, it's this dopamine hangover. Right. Like chemically inside. It's like when you, I don't know, if you were to go out drinking a night before, there's this, there's, there's this dopamine kind of 
um, the hit, but the, yep. the day after, or you know, who, who who here has gone on a holiday and come back and they've felt that holiday hangover, yes. you know, yes, because you've just had this explosion of dopamine and now you're back to you know beige, black and white uh, yes. life. It's because your your current reality that you're experiencing is is vast from a chemical perspective is vastly um, uh, 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 well, it's less exciting. Well, it's less exciting and it's uh, de-elevated yes. um, fr fr from from a dopamine perspective. So it's now just about understanding that and working with that. And uh, like you said, using tools within your relationship to be able to um, dance with it, so, so to speak. It is. Yeah, mate. I, th um, I think uh, we should put a pause there because uh, you, know, over. You, you and I speak about relationships all the time. I think they'll, they'll be an integral aspect of the podcast. You know, we're obviously very interested in relationships and so forth, but um, 100%. we should get I a relationship expert on the podcast. Hey, let's get Esther Perel on the podcast. You know what? Let's do it. Done. <laughs> hey, Esther. Esther. Oh, she's, yeah. yeah she's I'm just here actually right now. Yeah. yeah she's having tea. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's good, mate. I think, yeah, you know, coming full circle, longevity is about, you know, moving with your, your biological needs, but then also doing that in a frame of uh, what's good for your pursuits as well and being able to challenge those every once in a while. 100%. Um, I hope this was helpful, guys. Um, if you have any other specific uh, requests or, um, you know, questions uh, about what you would like us to talk about further or delve or flesh out more, even so, uh, let us know because we're really, really open to discussing anything that you guys want to listen to. Paulie, always a pleasure, mate. Always a pleasure, Tommy. All right. See you guys. Bye.